This week, the world has taken one tragic step closer to World War III. This eerie video led me to discover one of the darkest situations going on right now that hardly anyone seems to know about. This woman was just found guilty of committing one of the greatest bank frauds the world has ever seen. So great, in fact, that she is now being given the death penalty for it. And I have literally just got back from my first ever trip to Texas. Like, literally just walked in the door right now. I haven't even had a shower. Look! Look at this, this is 20 hours of travel hair. Oh my God. All so that I could get this video out to you guys no later than one day late. <laughs> so I'm gonna tell you all about my trip and I've also got something very exciting to announce at the end of the video. So Alex, cue this week's intro and let's get cooking. <laughs> Okay, let's start this video with what we've probably all been hearing about over the last couple of days. I'm very annoyed and uh, disappointed to announce that the world is, yes, right again on the brink of another major war. On Saturday, Iran, for the first time ever, launched an unprecedented attack on Israel, which honestly has sent shockwaves around the globe. Biden had to rush back to the White House. Massive lines started forming outside petrol stations. World War III started trending online. People in my comments started saying things like, so should I study for exams or plant potatoes? And I just want to live my life. Like, I like history, but I don't want to be a part of history. I feel you. So, I mean, putting all of the hype to the side, how worried should we actually be? Well, I've got the latest updates as of recording, so hopefully some of these can answer those questions. As you may or may not know, hundreds, I'm talking hundreds of missiles and drones were fired on Saturday night. Not just from Iran, though, that's the thing. It was from Iraq, Yemen, and Lebanon, too. But here's the important part, because Israel claimed that 99% of the projectiles were intercepted, but not just by them, because we've got American and British forces who say that they had fighter jets in the sky. However, there are reports of one direct strike on an airbase, and in terms of casualties, a seven-year-old boy was seriously hurt by shrapnel. So after these attacks, you may be asking, okay, what happens now? Are we clear? <laughs> No, we are not. <laughs> but it is important to know before I dive into that, that these attacks from Iran were actually in retaliation to Israeli strikes that killed a number of their senior generals. Iran say that the situation for them is now concluded. So, that's good news, right? But they did warn of a much bigger attack if Israel decides to retaliate, and added that American bases would be targeted too if America decides to help them retaliate. So retaliation at this point seems like the thing we really need to focus on. The latest is that Israel's military have said to have presented a range of options for potential strikes against Iran, with the war cabinet now weighing them up in a meeting scheduled to have begun now. But somewhat worryingly for the rest of the world, an Israeli source has been briefing the media saying that Israel cannot allow such a large attack to pass without some kind of response. And also some Israeli politicians argue that a powerful message needs to be sent so that Iran doesn't repeat its actions. <laughs> You know, it's just gonna add. Okay, I'm not even gonna comment on that. I'm not even gonna comment on that. But because of this warlike sentiment, Joe Biden has privately expressed concern that the Israeli Prime Minister, Benjamin Netanyahu, is trying to drag the US into a broader conflict, according to three people familiar with his comments. So even the president is a little bit like, okay, uh, let's, let's calm the fuck down now. And a senior administration official told the NBC News that Biden told Netanyahu on a call on Saturday night that the US will not participate in any offensive operations against Iran, and that Israel should not respond by retaliating. Good. I mean, <laughs> this is like one of the first times where I'm like, America is actually, let's try to calm things down. At least that's what it seems like. And honestly, I do hope this is true because the consequences of Iran and Israel getting into war drags a whole host of other countries into the mix that simply do not want this war. I mean, even Rishi Sunak is saying right now, just take take the, the, the win, leave it alone, Israel. You've got what you want. Uh, don't retaliate. And I mean, with the UK talking about having to draft people in if we go to war, I'm not trying to be on the front lines before GTA 6. So from what we can gather, how worried should we be? I think honestly, as of right now, it genuinely could go either way. But even if this situation does hopefully calm the hell down, I think we all just need to take a second and pause and just think about and realize how many times we have got this close to this all just escalating beyond our control again. And I mean, I know that there is no simple solution. It's just, it's so surreal that even after everything the world has learned from the atrocities of World War II, we're right back at it again, tempting fate. It doesn't seem possible. And if there is a World War III, that's it. 
there's not going to be a fourth. Not with the weapons that we have now. But I mean, this situation is developing very fast. And by the time you're watching this video, there could have been strikes already and things could have blown up in a major way. So I will keep you updated. Go follow me on Instagram and TikTok. That's where I'll do my, my quick updates. But let's move on. And we're moving on to this scary ass video that started going viral on Twitter. And I thought, what the hell is that? I mean, the zombie apocalypse that we all are kind of expected by now starting to kick off, eh? Now, I could not watch something like that and just keep on scrolling without finding out what the hell is happening. And I just want to emphasize, the more that I looked into this video, the crazier this whole situation has become. And I genuinely cannot believe how many people don't know about this, including myself. So this footage is actually taken in the country of Myanmar, which Alex is probably showing you uh, on the map right here. Nice map, Alex. And the reason all of these people are swarming this mine has an incredibly dark backstory. You see, the hills of Kachin hold the finest jade in the world, which earns billions of dollars for the companies who mine them. But it's not just the mining companies who are in search of these precious stones. Every year, they leave behind huge heaps of waste that thousands of scavengers then pick through, desperately hoping to find a rock that will change their lives forever. But because they are there illegally, their lives are under constant threat by landslides, falling from heights, and raids from soldiers trying to protect the sites. In just the last 10 10 landslides, which can happen every few months, a staggering 600 people have died, many of which are only found when mining operations begin again during the next season's digging process. And because the conditions are so bad for these scavengers, many turn to heroin to ease muscle pain, but quickly become addicted. Drug use around these sites are widely accepted in needles or as common as soda cans on the floor. Locals say that you can see people in the early morning half asleep walking around with needles hanging out of their arms or eating noodles with a syringe in their ear just like you'd put a cigarette. But even if you do get lucky enough to find a rock, by law you can be arrested on the spot for just touching them. And that's why locals believe this jade has become a cursed treasure for them. But regardless of the consequences, up to 400,000 people in Myanmar are said to rely on the dangerous job of illegal scavenging. And the most tragic part is that this is all while the mining companies are literally turning entire mountains completely flat and turning them into valleys. Locals say that at least five mountains that they grew up watching and looking at have now completely disappeared. And this has been happening for decades. And I only found out about all of this like th this week, which I mean is so wild. So the question is, did you know about this or uh, is it just me? Moving on. Okay, now this story is mind blowing. Tro Mai Lan, a 67 year old Vietnamese property developer, was sentenced to death on Thursday for stealing from one of the country's largest banks over a period of 11 years. Now, I mean, you can imagine getting away with some, stealing some small, unnoticeable amount of money for that period of time. And then be like, okay, that's plausible. But you want to know how much she stole? Uh, 44 billion US dollars. She apparently managed to do this by gaining illegal control of the bank during a merger and then used it as her freaking cash cow. She would use thousands of ghost companies in Vietnam and abroad to give loans to herself and her allies. And then whenever she needed to, she would then use her almost infinite amount of money to bribe government officials. And just to give you the scope of how massive this case was, they said 2,700 people were summoned to testify. There was 10 state prosecutors and over 200 lawyers involved, and there were 104 boxes of evidence weighing a total of six tons. The verdict now requires her to return $27 billion, but uh, as you'd imagine, prosecutors are doubtful that their money will ever be recovered. It's now gone down as the largest fraud case in the country's history, let alone potentially the world, and she's become one of the very few women in Vietnam to be sentenced to death for a white collar crime. Insane. Moving on. And on to the final story because I just got back from my first ever trip to Texas. So here are my thoughts and what I got up to. Now for starters, from the moment I left my house to the moment I got to my hotel, it's about 21 hours of travel. And that's what I've just got back from. So rem reminder. But yes, after all of that traveling, we got to the hotel and all I wanted to do was just order some Chick-fil-A and go to bed. And I quickly learned that if you order a burger and chips, you will get a burger and a packet of potato chips. <laughs> so for everyone going to America, remember it's fries, 
order fries. The next morning, I woke up and headed to the event, which I was actually invited to Texas for. The United Nations Agency, UNESCO, wanted to gather together some of the world's top journalists and news content creators to create a round table. Yeah, yeah, round table. <laughs> to see what we could all learn from each other. And not just that, but for anyone who wants to do this as a career, what they could learn from all of the huge, wide-ranging topics that we discussed on that day. And so once we wrapped the first day, I decided to treat my Myself by going to what has been claimed by people not just to be the best barbecue in Texas, but potentially the world. And it's called Terry Black's. Terry Black's in town has only been open since 2014, I believe, and it, it, it feels like a place that's been around 100 years. I mean, they got it dialed in. Vegans? Look away now. Now this was the place, and uh, despite us going on a weeknight, when, when it shouldn't have been busy, it was still absolutely rammed. The, the line went into the freaking parking lot. So I saw, that, I saw that and I was like, damn, this shit's gonna be good. And honestly, there has never been a wait more worth it because the 10 hour slow smoked beef brisket and beef rib was immediately, it immediately became the best meat I have ever tasted. And I don't know if you can see what I'm talking about, but I'm, my mouth is drooling. I want to go back to Texas just for that. Woo! Goddamn. The next day, I decided to wake up, I went to the gym, recorded some videos because the news never sleeps, and then I headed off to the International Symposium for Journalism. Yes, immediately when I stepped into that room, I became an adult because with a name like that, you have to grow up pretty fast. I then recorded a podcast and did some videos for UNESCO and then I decided to sneakily sneak away to watch Civil War and woo, the cinema and the movie bangers. You basically had your own menu and you just write down your order on a piece of paper. The waiter comes over, takes it away and then comes back five minutes later and brings you your food. I had a freaking burger, loaded fries, Maddie had a pizza and the movie Civil War, it was genuinely solid. Like, I, I highly, highly recommend you checking it out, especially while it's still in cinema. Very good movie. Kind of uh, topical for the world right now, but uh, we won't get stuck on that. And then for my third and final full day in Austin, we of course decided to go to an IHOP, but then after that, I had to really experience Texas by shooting my first ever Krakaka. <laughs> now, I'm not gonna lie, maybe it's just the British person in me, but I expected like a, a full 10 minute safety talk them, for them to really emphasize safety. Not really. <laughs> they ran us through how to shoot the gun one time uh, in a separate room, then said, all right, we'll see you on lane nine. Uh, we turn up to lane nine with all of our bullets in hand and um, they're like, there's no one there that you just shoot. It's like it's like a driving range for golf. That's what it's like. Now shooting the pistol made me realize how freaking fake all movies are that people shoot pistols in because the kickback is insane. Shooting with one hand, it, shooting with two hands is impossibly inaccurate. Shooting with one hand, good luck. And then it was time for the rifle and oh my lord. I mean, you can't really experience it from the video. Actually, maybe I'll cut it and Alex will play a little a couple minutes of just this so you can hear the sound. Yeah, it was more powerful than you can imagine, and I was shook. I wanted to shoot and fully automatic, but you had to book those, so I thought, yeah, maybe next time, eh? We got to hold the gun in John Wick called the Scatado, sc Staccato, I think it's something like that. And then, while we were perusing, just looking at the 40% off guns, we met just some random guy, just a regular customer, and we started talking about guns, and then he pulled out this massive Uzi. I don't know if it was an Uzi, but it looked like an Uzi and he had a massive silencer and he put it on and he started like waving it around in the shop. I mean, he was a nice guy. He didn't seem dodgy at all. Um, but I thought, oh, this is a little bit intimidating. And he just said that, yeah, he was a gun enthusiast and he has about $100,000 worth. And that was pretty much it. We had Cheesecake Factory in the evening and we left the next day after doing some work in the morning with a very big smile on my face. Honestly, I give Austin a solid nine out of 10. It was insane food, insane amounts of things to do and really good people. So 
I highly, highly recommend checking it out and I will definitely be going back myself. And then for the major announcement is expect a second video this week on Thursday. I mean, I've been wanting to try and make two videos per week for a while now. But I mean, we'll see how much I can manage and how much you guys want to watch. So if you have been wanting a second video midweek catch up, please let me know in the comments because I need you to spur me on and so we can get this done. But I will be getting you one on Thursday. So I guess I'll see you then. Love ya. Bye. <laughs> Oh, I'm tired. I am going to bed and I will be resting easy. I've been lightheaded this video because it's been so ha ah, my god. Bye. I'll see you on Thursday.